Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about top to vec once again, and this is really the third video in this series where we talk about the different parameters of top to vec, when to use them, and why. Now, in this video, we're going to be really talking about two parameters in particular. This is the document IDs parameter and the keep documents parameter. Now, we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these, but the document IDs is going to be the way in which the each document in your top to vec model is going to be referenced. Now, by default, this is going to be an integer that's going to go from one and tick all the way up to however many documents you might have. And then the document keep parameter is going to say if you want to keep the documents or not. Again, this is going to be based on use cases and how large your corpus is and how you plan on using the top to vec model in production. But in order to really understand these parameters, I think it's best if we just pop on over to Jupyter Lab and take a look right now. Okay, now that we're in our Jupyter Lab, let's go ahead and import everything that we're going to be working with. Once again, just like the last videos, we are working with the Volume 7 data from the Bitter Allo project, and we're also not going to be working with the data as a data frame, rather as just a list of strings. And once again, we're going to just clean those up like we saw in the first video in this series. Now for this video, we're going to be focusing on two things. The first thing is going to be document IDs, and the second thing is going to be the keep documents parameters. So the document IDs is essentially a unique value per document. By default, this is going to be an integer and tick up from the first document all the way up until your last. And by default, this is set to true, keep documents. We're going to see both of these in depth and kind of talk about why you might want to use uh, your own unique IDs, how to make them, and then how to change them and inject them back into the model. And we're also going to talk about the keep documents in depth and when and why you might want to use this parameter and when you might want to turn it off. So let me go ahead and comment this out. And we're just going to jump right in. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to be wanting in this model um, for my unique document IDs to correspond to this names column. Now I'm going to do something here that's going to introduce an error on purpose, but it's for learning purposes. So what I could do is I can create a new list of names. So now I've got, in theory at this stage, a set of 21,747 unique names that will function as my document ID. Let's go ahead and make our model and kind of see what this looks like in practice. And you'll see the error that we get and how to address it. So we're going to call the top to vet class. We're going to pass in our documents just like last time. And as I stated in the last video, we're going to be sticking with fast learn because this video is being done uh, in live coding. And I don't want to waste seven, eight minutes waiting for it to train. This will train in just one minute. And then finally, I'm going to be passing in my document IDs parameter. And that's going to be set to my list right here of names, which I want to serve as my document IDs. And if I execute this, it helps if you actually spell document ideas, IDs correctly. If I were to try this, I get a value error. And what does the value error tell me? Well, it tells me the document IDs need to be unique. And if I scroll up, I can easily troubleshoot why that's probably the case. In South Africa, surnames are quite common. Um, we have some that function like Smith in, mo uh, in modern Western English. And so there's a good chance that some of these names are the exact same, and they all need to be unique. Now, I know this just being familiar with the data set, but you might not know that um, just without any kind of prior knowledge. So let's go ahead and try to address this issue. I can say for I, name and enumerate. And for those of you that don't know, uh, enumerate allows for us to just get an integer within a loop automatically. So we don't have to store a variable of I outside of the loop and tick up. And I'm going to iterate over the names. And so let me just demonstrate what this kind of looks like. So you can kind of see real fast. I'm only going to iterate over the first 10 names and you'll see that it looks like this. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to use the unique value of i and use that as a way to ensure that each individual has a unique name. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Why not just use the document ID that's given by default that's going to be an integer? And the reason for this is because when I display the data, I don't want to have to go to another file to look up who the person is that corresponds to that document ID. I want to have that data really kind of handy and ready to go in the model itself. So what I can do is I can then go ahead and create a unique name, and we're going to make this equal to an f string. And we can store within this f string 
or we can pass in this f string uh, the value of i, and we can have four leading zeros. That way, we don't have that way all of our um, all of our IDs have the exact same length. And again, this is going to be functioning as a string. I'm going to have an underscore, and I'm going to have name come after that. And let's go ahead and print off unique name, so you can see what this looks like. So this is our integer and our, our i and our unique our name, and then this is our unique output. Now I'm going to leave this alone for right now. This is very bad form, and we're going to see why this is relevant to leave in there in just a second, so that we can show you how to correctly add in and correct your document IDs. But for right now, just accept that this is bad form on purpose. So let's make an empty list outside of this loop, and we're going to append unique names. We're going to append that. I'm going to comment this out. And we're going to use dot append there. And we're going to iterate over our entire collection of names. And now what I can do is I can execute this exact same code that I did a second ago. And I'm not going to get that error. And the reason why I don't get that error is because now I've ensured by the integer that every single name in this new unique names list is perfectly unique. I'm going to pause the video here, and then we're going to kind of pop back when it's done. And I'm going to show you how to change the document IDs once they're inserted already in the model. OK, now that everything is done, let's go ahead and take a look at our data. And we're going to print off the data for topic two. And we're going to print it off, and it looks like this. So I've been able to succeed in ensuring that my document ID has the data that I consider relevant to the uh, to the person. It has the person's uh, somewhat unique name. Now, we know there's some overlap, but we can account for that with our unique integer here. So this is why this is useful to do it this way in some use cases. However, I look at this, I think, oh man, I should not have done that. I should have gotten rid of this comma and this space, and then the extra spaces when there's multiple names and only used underscores so it looks cleaner. Ah, what can I do? Well, fortunately, we can change and inject the document IDs with a new set. So let's go ahead and take a look at where the model holds the document IDs. And just like the vocab, it's held in the document IDs. And what we see here is that we're working with an array, and it's a D type of this, which corresponds to the uh, characters that are used in the string to represent this particular data type. So to do this, I need to convert our unique names into a NumPy array. So I'm going to be importing NumPy as MP. For those of you that don't know why this is important, um, essentially a NumPy array, the way it sits in memory, is a little different. It's a little lighter, actually a lot lighter in some cases. And so we want to use a NumPy array to ensure that we're injecting the same data form as the model is expecting. And so we can do this by importing NumPy array and converting our list into a, a NumPy array. So I'm going to say unique names too, not really being creative here with the name, is going to be equal to, and we're going to use some uh, list, actually let's not use list comprehension here, let's iterate over, over everything so we can do this. Um, actually we're just going to say array, and we're going to pass in unique uh, names too. And what this will do is it will convert our unique names too into an array list. And I'm going to just pop this down right here. And then we're going to say for name and unique names, we are going to say uh, name is going to be equal to name.replace. We want to replace all instances of a comma followed by a space with simply an underscore. And we want to dot replace any instance of a space with an underscore. Oop, there we go. And then we're going to say unique names to dot append this new name. It's a little verbose, but you get the idea. And then finally, what we're going to say is unique names array, long name, but it's going to be helpful for our purposes. And we're going to convert it into an actual NumPy array. So if I were to print off unique names array, we see that now our data type is the same. We're losing a character here because we have dropped the, um, uh, the comma. I believe that's why. Someone correct me in the comments down below if that's the case. Uh, but what we're able to see here is that we have everything formatted in a much cleaner way, in my opinion. We've maintained the capitalization. That's important because we want to ensure that the last name remains capitalized. And, and that's going to allow us to ensure that when we grab the first item in this document ID after the number, it corresponds to that specific thing. So now we can say model.documentIDs is equal to unique 
names array. So we can automatically go in and inject this into our model dot document IDs. And we can print it off and ensure that in fact it has worked and in fact it has. And just for testing sake, let's go ahead now and let's iterate over all of our documents once again and print off the results to make sure that our model does in fact have the things correct and we're not getting any errors. And in fact, we see that everything is now as we would expect. So this is really the document IDs in a nutshell, why they're useful, when they're useful, how to change them after you've trained the model. But now let's take uh, a switch tax a little bit and let's talk about the other thing that I wanted to cover in this video, which let's go back up and print this off once again. And document IDs. Scroll back up so we can find it. And we want to look now at this keep documents Boolean parameter. So why is keep documents useful? Well, keep documents is a Boolean uh, parameter. It means that it can be true or false. It's set to true by default. So what this will do is if it's set to true, it's going to maintain inside of the model the strings that correspond to each document. So this is fantastic, but really to understand why this might be useful to turn off, let's take a look at a specific example. So let's go ahead and save our model to disk. And I know for a fact that this model will be able to be saved to disk because I have done it in the past. And we can save it to disk by saying model.save and I'm just going to give this an unclever name, call it model uh, one. And this is going to save to a memory our, or to our disk, the actual model. And if we go over, we'll be able to let me pop out, pop back in. We'll see that model one is sitting right here. So let's take a look now and see how large model one actually is. Now there's not a nice way to do this in Jupyter lab. So for this, we're going to pop on over to uh, explore. When we look at the model size, we can see that it's 65.7 megabytes. Let's go ahead and try now to get that size a little bit smaller because we want to have it smaller for production. Let's make model two and make that equal to top to vec. We're going to pass in our, uh, our docs and we're going to have document IDs equal to unique names. Once again, we're just going to stick with that. And then we're going to make our speed equal to fast learn. So it goes quickly. And then finally, we're going to say keep documents is equal to false. And then let's go ahead and execute that. We're going to train it up and then we're going to pop back when it's done and take a look at the size of model two. Okay, now that we're back, let's go ahead and do model two dot save. And we're going to just call this model two. And we're going to save that now to disk. And then let's take a look at that now and explore to test the size difference. And if you look at the size difference, one of the things we're able to see right away is that it, the size difference is about uh, four megabytes. Now that might not seem like a lot, but remember that's a difference of roughly 8%. And so as you increase in larger corpora, this size difference will make a substantial impact on how much space your model is going to store on disk. But let's take a look at maybe one of the downsides of doing this. I'm gonna copy and paste this down here once again. And we're going to do this. We're going to search over everything this way. And now one of the things that I'm getting is I'm not able to actually print off the documents. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is because the search by documents by topic now no longer has that data stored within it. And so this means that I cannot actually iterate over each of these individual documents. And so instead, I have to only work with the document ID and the score. Now, this isn't that big of a deal because one of the things that I can do is I can store all of my data outside of the model now and only store it in maybe a JSON-L. Now, in production, this would be very useful because JSON-L files open up as a stream rather than open up as an entire file. And that means that you can iterate line by line and it makes it a little easier and a little lighter in production in some use cases. Now, I personally, for most cases, will keep the documents with the, uh, the actual uh, model itself. And the reason for this is because I like to have everything in one place, easy to access. But if I'm working with thousands or tens of thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of documents that are a lot longer than these, I would consider using keep 
uh, documents and setting it to false. Now that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you have a good sense of document IDs and the keep documents parameter, why they're useful, when to use them, how to adjust them on the fly. Uh, we're going to wrap it up here and then continue on with top to vec over the next few videos while we explore these parameters in more depth. I do all these videos on this channel for free. So if you get a lot out of the videos here, please do consider supporting it via Patreon or with YouTube memberships down below. As always, thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. You all help keep this channel alive, and I'm very much appreciative for it.